Inflation data came out this morning, softer than expected. Stock market rallied initially, but then sold off. I want to take a look at and break down the inflation data so you can see what the market's kind of focusing on. And then we're going to look at DIA ETF, QQQ ETF, and of course, SPY ETF. These will follow um, Dow Jones 30, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. It looks as if the Dow may be a leader here and it might go to the downside. Let's see how the day transpires. It's still midday. Let's look at some charts so I can show you what I'm looking at with the inflation data. Here's a look at the headline inflation. This is the actual number. The number comes in, it's a three digit number about, I think the number we just saw was about 305. Every month they give us a number. So this gives us, looking at this, you can see the trend line and how far above the trend line we are. Now the question is, can we create a new trend line? What the Federal Reserve is not going to do is bring this back down to the same trend line. We're basically at the new pricing levels we're probably going to see. Now, this all depends, of course, on how the Federal Reserve moves forward based on inflation themselves. But inflation is starting to fall. The 2% target is within range. However, the Federal Reserve has told us that they're looking at 2025 before they feel like the 2% target rate is going to be hit. So more than likely, this is our new sort of plateau and we'll grow from here and hopefully at an increasingly lower pace. Given that, here is what, this is the same exact chart, but on a trend line basis that is comparing the year over year numbers. Clearly, we're moving much lower. The target rate, of course, is 2%, and we're getting close to that 2.5%. So it's within range. But the problem with this particular chart is this is headline. That includes food and energy, very volatile items. Let's move forward to the core rate. This is the one that they're really going to be focusing on. Again, well above trend line. And the year over year, not quite nearly as good as the headline. But still, this improved better than, or improved by falling more than the markets were expecting. That's why we got such a big pop at the beginning of the uh, uh, morning. Um, I look at year over year because it gives you an idea that uh, where we're moving toward. The year over year, month after month after month in the past few data points is increasing at a decreasing rate. That's a concept that's kind of, you have to kind of sit there and think about, about that for a second. But if we are still increasing, but at a decreasing rate, and eventually that decreasing rate gets us down to 2%, we've hit the goal. But we're looking at two years out. Here is average hourly earnings. Just before 4th of July weekend, uh, what was it, about the 28th of June, personal consumption expenditures came out, uh, personal income and PCE deflator, as well as this chart. You have to kind of sort of combine these because what's happening, not only are prices elevated because of outside factors, too much money in the money supply, interest rates too low, um, the supply chain shocks. There were so many variables that contributed to this. That's why we saw inflation spike up as much as it did. The Federal Reserve responds. But now wages are responding. Wages are starting to catch up. People just can't get by. So what they're doing is they're turning to your bosses and say, you either give me a raise or I look elsewhere. This is increasing average hourly earnings. But it, there's ripple effects. If an employer has to raise wages for their employees, they then have to raise prices for the products that they sell. Now becomes the process of the conundrum of, okay, wages are increasing, prices are moderating, but as wages increase, consumption will as well because the rate of growth of, of earnings will determine the rate of growth of consumption, which will determine the rate of growth of inflation. They all coincide. Here is the exact same chart 
on the year-over-year -year basis, comparing last year's rate of growth to today's rate of growth. And as you can see, we're, we're moderating in the latest numbers. Um, <clears throat> and this is what, if you'll recall, after uh, when non-farm payrolls came out, there was a pretty decent move to the upside. Then the market sold off. Uh, and this is why. I think there was a lack of buyers, lack of follow-through. And one of the reasons, one of the headlines we kept seeing was average hourly earnings are growing too much. If you process that information, as earnings catch up to the price increases, individuals will continue to spend. That we're not seeing a moderation in overall employment and therefore earnings, which would help bring down inflation. If the Federal Reserve does nothing and says, yeah, we're going to we're going to land this thing perfectly. More than likely, there's going to be a lot more expenditures and it's going to push inflation back upward. That's something you should keep in mind. It's not going to affect the markets for quite some time, maybe not a year from now. In the meantime, we're lacking follow through. Here is uh, this is. The Dow Jones, you can see the big pop at uh, 8.30 this morning in New York. And we look like we're pretty much going sideways. They're only up, the Dow's only up about a half a percentage point for the day. Fairly normal day. Sure, you got a big pop up. Hit its high, came back down. This is a fairly normal day. There's nothing to get too excited about here. I look at the Dow, the 30 the ones that will more than likely feel the pressure of continued in, in, uh, interest rates because of higher expenditures, because of employers or employees getting more income. I look at that as more of an effect on the Dow 30 than, say, the broader S&P 500. Now, right about the time we started sputtering out, I bought a put on SPY ETF. I didn't go in on DIA ETF, but I think I think DIA ETF is probably going to, by the end of the day, lead us lower. I feel as if SPY ETF is probably going to moderate and probably move lower from this most recent high we've seen intraday. NASDAQ, the love fest still seems to be going. They're up about a 0.1%. Nonetheless, with all three of these, this is these are normal statistical days. But we're lacking that follow through. I think so many people are looking forward to, well, there's still a lot of problems. This is going to take some time. But in the meantime, when you look at the charts themselves, slowly but surely, they keep edging higher and higher and higher. At a snail's place, we're up, what, 15% on NASDAQ for the year? That's a good year. We just hit the 50% marker. Even if we cut that in half for the year, that's still a good year. So any downside moves, you're looking at a positive year-over-year -year basis for NASDAQ alone. But it's those the Dow 30 that's been more flatline and more likely to lead us lower that I think is going to probably cap NASDAQ. We'll see. But some of the things you want to take a look at, here's the two-year note. Obviously, the bond market looked at today's inflation data and said, Psh, we're where we need to be for a long time. Prices have moderated. Here's the four-hour bar chart, same chart. You can see the big drop there. We had just crossed over 5%. I don't think crossing over 5% again is out of the question, but I don't think we probably see that for some time. It might be three, four months, six months, nine months, 12 months when we continue to get data and we see the resilience of the uh, employment sector with continued increases in average hourly earnings pushing higher, which would equate to higher consumption, which in turn is going to go ahead and push inflation. That's going to push the Federal Reserve. So for now, we may have moderated out of these ultra high levels that could give the go ahead signal for stock buyers to st step back in. Maybe DIA ETF finally takes a bid. Maybe. Uh, the 10 year note fell as well. Not nearly as much as the two year note. 
and we can see it wasn't nearly as high to begin with on a on a uh, percentage basis yield. This is yield you're looking at. Uh, nonetheless, the the yield curve is moderating more and more. So we're starting to see the long end of the curve kind of mellow out a little bit after catching up to where the front end is. Interest rates are going to remain higher for longer than expected. And traders are getting that message. So the longer end of the yield is starting to catch up. The two year is starting to mellow out and kind of come back down because the thinking is two years from now, the Fed will be able to start chopping interest rates. We'll see if that actually comes to fruition. In the meantime, I'm going to consistently watch these, um, the yield on the 2 and the 10, because that's going to give us an idea as to what could potentially happen with the consumer uh, and then with stocks. But my thesis remains the same. We're probably going to see interest rates continue higher at some point because the Federal Reserve will get this one wrong too. They aren't at that magical number where it's like, this is perfect and we're going to land this thing perfectly. Those average hourly earn earnings are going to play into the factor. As those, uh, as that number continues to move higher and higher or keeps above the that trend line that it was at, that means consumption will do exactly the same, which means price pressures will continue to move higher. The reason why, if you give your employees a raise, you have to find that money somewhere. So you raise your prices, which means consumption prices are going to go higher eventually. And sure, maybe they moderate down to 2.5%, 2.75%. But it's not that magical 2% that the Federal Reserve is going to be looking at. And they may start ratcheting up interest rates a little more and a little more. The stock market will probably start to wobble at that point and then move lower. Not much. It's not going to be a catastrophe. But we're going to moderate out. There's also other factors out there. Banks. Banks, of course, are sitting on loans for office buildings. This is one that's out there that we expect will really hit the market hard at some point. I saw a statistic on Bank of America. They're sitting on $3.1 trillion in assets, 100 million of which is considered uh, office mortgages that are now in default. That's a third of a percent. And we'll see 300 million would be 10%. So a third of that, about 3% of their, their assets. We'll see how that plays out. It's going to start showing up three, six, nine, 12 months. You're going to start seeing these news uh, events come out and it will continually pressure the stock market. Eventually, however, we should get there. For now, I think the end of the day, DIA pushes us lower. S&P 500, the SPY ETF, we probably moderate out. NASDAQ will probably remain bid a little bit. It's the AI party, Fiesta. I'll keep you posted. See you in the next video.